All right, so here's the portfolio, the composition, final portfolio, two facing eight and a half by 11 pages in a portrait orientation. So you open InDesign, file new, and then you can go to print. You got letter. Instead of picas, you could do inches, vertical orientation, press create. You could preview it if you want, if you're unsure what it is, but that's what it is. All right, so like I was saying before, in every, in like all the Photoshop, Illustrator, if you press control R, you can turn on and off your ruler. Here's the page layout over here. Let me put this down there. Here's the page layout, your properties, your links. You can have graphics for uh, character because I like to have that readily available. Um, here, put that in there and then put that in there. Okay. So you can set out the layout however you want, but the main thing is, is here are your pages, here's your layers, your links, and your properties. If you, any of those windows disappear, you can always check them on or check them off over here on this menu. Um, so if we go back to the assignment, which is not there, but here. So the first page, is a cover sheet with your name, the course title, and the number. So if you go to the first page, that's your cover sheet. Here's your text box on the left-hand side. So name, now I forgot. Course number. So there's the date, my name. Cool. It says it doesn't want to be larger than 12 point font. That's pretty small. Um, it's a giant white piece of whatever. And be in all caps, but it doesn't have to be. That's up to you. As long as you are consistent with whatever your visual identity or style wants to be for the portfolio, that's totally fine by me. So to create a new page under the page window, there's this big plus sign. You could press that, add a few pages. It says you could fit all of the assignments in 10 to 12 spreads. So a whole spread is two pages. So a spread is what I'm looking at here, the two pages. So the first page being the cover page, the second page being uh, that spread. Um, to insert the, let's see what else we're doing. So use graphic layouts to reinforce the essentials of the projects, compose your portfolio as you would a presentation board. Choreograph the sequence through your portfolio. Consider the negative white space. So you can use headings and title sheets to introduce each project. So whether you want to do um, some sort of graphic at the front that says, you know, this is this is one A. You can create whatever font you want. 
Uh, change the size. This so this is all in the properties tool that pops up automatically when I'm ever editing something. So maybe that's one A. Maybe one A has a title. So if you have a text box and you have that little red box that you can see here, that little red box means that the text is going beyond the limit of the text box. So if you want, you could actually double click the square and it'll form to the size of that object. See what I'm doing? So maybe that's 1A, that's the title. And then maybe you wanna have a description of what 1A was. Um, say you wanted to write everything in all caps, but you don't wanna deal with actually making everything in all caps. You can select all the letters under the properties. You scroll to this area with these T's. You can use this one. It makes it all capital letters. It's really, really convenient. You could use this one with small caps. So it's like big caps with small caps. That's how you could do that. So if you wanna see that's 42 size font. So maybe some of the text is in 18. Um, I believe there's a way Fill with placeholder text. So if you want to lay out your object, you can fill the space with this. So you know you can come back and and uh, edit the text there if you wanted to. It's all random, like Latin letters and whatever. But no. So if that's the first page, I'm going to start adding some of my images. So I'll go back to some of my previous assignments. So for example, for the first class, I might have illustrator files. I should have images of them. Um, but I'll start populating the drawing. But my problem is, is that I don't have physical images saved on my thing. So if I have a PDF, of a drawing. So for the first project, here's my drawing. So you can drag and drop any file, right? So just take your file, drag and drop it. It automatically brings up this like hovering thing where I can change the scale or just insert it onto the page. So if I have InDesign open, if I just click, it'll place the object in the same scale that it is. So if it's a really big file, it'll come in really large. If it's a really big file and I wanna change the scale that it comes in, I can click and drag and I can make it, it's gonna to lock to the proportions. I'll make it whatever size I want. So if I want it to be maybe this size, I could just place it right here in the middle and it'll show that. So when I'm zoomed out, you can't really see the definition of the lines. Um, but maybe it's, it's like that. If I want to preview what I'm looking at, you can do Shift W, and that'll bring up a preview of what the book looks like. So you can scroll to different pages, and you can see what the preview of that sheet looks like. Mm -hmm. To zoom in and out, you're pressing Control minus or Control plus, just like the other Adobe softwares. Say you want to make your layout and you want to place the images later, you can create different boxes. And those boxes can be used to create some sort of format if you wanted to, if you want a big page or a small page. So you could take your images and you can drag and drop and it'll fit in that box instead. Uh oh. So you could do that for any image. Inside the image itself, if you double click the box that you're putting the image in, 
it'll scale to the proportions of that box. If you click the circle, the circle is like the cropping region. So if I only want a particular area of the region that I want, I can move this object once I'm inside. So I click the circle and I can move the object freely inside that box. If I want the object to get bigger and scale within a selected area, I can make the area here and then I could either scale it in Illustrator, you have to hold shift if you want a proportional, or you have your frame fitting here in the properties. So you can click different form fittings to fit, stretch, or align the image to that box. Right? There's even an auto fit option. So you could click that. So now when you scale the box, it will scale with the drawing, which is pretty cool. Uh, when you save the InDesign file, so you could do save as InDesign. Save it. Um, when you have your drawings here, say this is PDF 01, here's um, under the links properties, it will add information. So it has exactly where the document is located. It has exactly the size. So it's a live document. So if I open up um, PDF 01, and if I want to change it in Illustrator to be a different line weight, maybe the line weight that I used or was familiar with six, uh, you know, three months ago when I started this assignment, maybe I know how to use the program better. So I'll change the line weights on the drawing. I can open up Illustrator, change the drawing, and it'll replace itself in the portfolio. Automatically. This is going to take a second. While that opens, um, if you want any type of design on every single page of your portfolio, you can maybe have like a, I don't know, maybe a black line as a graphic. So same thing with Illustrator. There's properties for strokes, fills, corners. So I'm putting this in the master panel A on the left-hand side. So once I do that, and say I want it to be black, I could fill it with black. And maybe I want it to go across each page. So there's like this black bar that goes across and maybe because it's a book, I'll have the black bar. On both sides, it'll look kind of cool. Maybe I have something like that. Maybe my concept for my projects have been quarterly expanding and I have some corner and I'm going to expand it. Right. Maybe that's my look. So it'll automatically be updated on every page. So maybe I want, if I want those items to be on that layer, I can use layers, right? Here's layer one, I've, I've drawn everything in layer one. When I hover over these objects or click them, there's a blue line. The blue line means that that's on layer blue. Add a new layer. Maybe I'll call this one graphic. So I know that that's, the bottom layer for the graphics. So if I go over here, go back to my text, maybe I want this text. If I make the cover one a little stronger, go back here. So maybe I want the text. Exactly. Um, I can't just bring it to the front because that's where it is. So I will.
can't think of how to move it automatically. So I'm just going to cut work in layer two. Paste in place. So now that's in layer two. I can tell because it's red. And I will make that color for the text. Here we go. Uh, it's not fill. Yeah, I didn't want to fill that. I wanted to. Is it stroke? Why can't I think of where the color is? Hold on. Okay, I select the text and then I do appearance and that did it. Sorry, that took so long. So I could do something like this where the description is there, the project, and then each project is like highlighted within this area. Um, uh, so that's how. So I want this also on layer two, so I could cut, go to layer two, paste in place. So now it's on layer two. And now I'm working in layer two, so it's not a problem. I can lock layer one, so I don't have to deal with that. And <laughs> don't forget to save while you're working. So you can also add, um, That's on layer one. So I have to unlock layer one, move the portfolio piece up. Maybe it's like right there. So I can also add, um, oh, if I edit an old file, right? Let's say I want this to be a darker line weight. Cool. So now that it's a darker line weight, file, save, right? I go here and there's my little warning mark. So the warning mark means that the link has been updated. I could right click, I could press relink. Oh wait, nope, I just press refresh at the bottom. So click the link, press refresh this little circle and it'll refresh. So now you edited the original PDF. It got updated in your InDesign file. Oh. Click auto fit. I want it to fit in this box. Cool. So I populate all the pages. To put in the page numbers, I go to insert, way to make a text box. And I'll put that there. Type, insert special character, symbol. Other. Yeah. 
Ah, markers, current page number. And I can make that text larger. So I could put it on each page. I could take this text and once it crosses that boundary, it's now page three. I could put it on each page or I simply cut it and put it on my master sheet. And now it says A and A, right? So once I go to the other sheet, uh, I got two, three. Those are my page numbers. I'm at page five. I want to see what it looks like. Shift W. Two, three, four, five. Let me get rid of those. Right? File, save. So once you populate the portfolio, you go to file, Adobe presets, high quality print, and it'll save it as a PDF. You don't have to click literally anything, just click export. And then you're going to think that it's done, but you can also go to window. Um, if you go to utilities and then background tasks, it'll tell you if it's printing. Looks like mine already printed, but this little circle with the loading thing will tell you if it's done printing. When you have such a big portfolio file, if you try to open the PDF, yeah, it's done, it's going to give you an error. When so then if I go here, I now have my PDF. So you got a window or view. Page display, two page viewing. Now I have my portfolio, my very empty portfolio. When you deliver the portfolio to us, don't just give us the PDF. I also want everyone to go to file. What is it? Package. Is everyone paying attention? Yeah. File, package. It'll give you a summary. You don't have to pay any attention to that. Just do package and save this portfolio folder and just press package, all right? Press okay. What this does in my handy folder where you keep your project is it makes a copy of the InDesign file. It makes a PDF. It also copies every single link that you had in there. So rather than it being spread all over your desktop randomly or spread in random files, you now have a condensed location of everything inside your portfolio. And you upload that to me. I need the folder, and then also the PDF. Does that make sense? Yeah. It also helps you because it's automatically just made you so much more organized. If you don't want to accidentally like edit your assignments while you're working, you can make a separate links folder while you're working in InDesign. So you can just copy your assignments and put that in a links folder that you're just dragging and dropping into your InDesign. So you can kind of already be organized when what you're putting in there. So if you need to edit anything, you can edit that file instead of editing the original file. Um, so no normally when I have an InDesign file, I'm using a new file 
and I'm also having a folder called links. So anything that I'm putting in my portfolio, I also like to keep clean. So I put that in my links folder and then I drop that in my portfolio. So see how this says page one on the cover? If I want to remove that, I could simply, because my layer two is above the graphic, I can put the page number on that graphic layer, cut, paste in place. So now when I'm on this page for your cover sheet, if you don't want the number one there, you could simply just make a box and fill that box. Wait, not that box. What's happening? Take not the box with the X because that's the one you're putting images in, but a regular rectangle. And you could fill that rectangle. Why is it not letting me fill anything? It's just loading with white. So now my cover won't have a page number on it. Be careful when you're editing things, you might accidentally add a stroke to these objects. And sometimes it's so small that you don't notice it. So you all automatically start adding assignments. Um, this happens literally every semester. Um, you might start adding assignments or images that have a stroke already turned on because maybe you're copying and pasting something that had a boundary. And then all of a sudden you go to print it and you don't care. And it doesn't even show in the preview, but if I were to print it, high quality print. I don't know why that's not showing up. Oh, because this is the color white. Haha. -ha. If it's accidentally black. You'd be surprised how many times when you go to print something, you're still going to have the stroke on the outside by accident. That's what I was trying to say. Anybody have any questions? So up here, there's the, the master and under pages. And that brings you to the separate category of like an A and a B, right? Your left page, right page. So whatever I put on this page, even if it's accidentally, an image or something, that image or whatever's on here, an image, a piece of text, shape, whatever's here, or here shows up on every single page. 
So just follow it down. So this one's the right page. So it's always going to show up on the right page. This one's the left page. So it's always going to show up on the left side of the book. So I was just showing an example too of like, it can be continuous. Objects can go from one spread to the next. Right? It will show up. Um, what we did here is this purple line is your kind of like clear space, your boundary, your margins right here, half inch. So it's basically a subtle reminder that like if the closer you get to the page, depending on what printer you have, it might not actually print the full size of the page. Like if I filled this whole page with black, some printers don't print all the way to the edge, depending on how high quality of a printer it is. Yeah, so I would, no. So I would say it's 0. 0.25 would really be like a good safe zone. Um, it'll give you more room to work with. Uh, I always like showing everybody that if you want a text that you don't have, everyone pays for the cloud Adobe subscription. So technically you can, when you're editing your characters, um, you have a bunch more font options, right? But not only that, you can also click find more. It'll give you more options. And all you have to do is press, um, this is like an infinite amount of options. See, see this whole scroll? These are the ones that I've downloaded already. But if you had your Creative Cloud open, the most important thing is just make sure whatever you're presenting is legible. Think about how this is a really orthogonal studio. Maybe you want to use a lot of straight lines. Maybe you want a font that's cornerly expanding. I have no idea. You can try whatever you want. But when you have the cloud app open, I believe it's this F. My computer's doing too much right now. So you can actually go to manage fonts. You can go to browse more fonts. So these are the ones that I have downloaded. So I can always look at more fonts and download more fonts. Mine's not working right now, but that's how I would do it. So it's pretty cool, fun software. So there's a... All right, so the biggest thing is consistency. Consistency in size, consistency in text, consistency in how you're just representing the drawings in each page. Maybe there's a whole spread, maybe you have a chapter page. If you want to be more graphic, you know, maybe right here it just says like assignment 3A. And that assignment 3A. Super big. You can do whatever you want. As long as all the assignments are in the portfolio, and as long as you follow the general requirements that are listed in the assignment itself, that's all I care about. It's vertical, you know, vertical pages, 11 by uh, eight and a half by 11, letter pieces of paper, 10 to 12 spreads of roughly, um, utilize the package like we were talking about. You 
make sure that everything's legible. Um, if you have an image that gets too large, you want to make sure that it's saved to 300 DPI. So if you have a large photograph, let me find a large photograph. Um, so if you have a large photograph, so say your renderings are going to get pretty large, right? So you can go in here if you go to image, canvas size or image size. If it was larger, you could always change the resolution here. So that said 72 pixels per inch. You know, a drawing that's 42 inches by 28 inches is pretty large. So maybe it's to have some presets. Image size changes. So if you essentially, we'll see what happens. Let me see if I can find the rendering from last week. That might put it in better context. All right, so this is like 15 inches by 26 inches. Um, for example, if you wanted to fit it to like an 11 by 17 piece of paper, you could downsize it to be as wide as 17 inches with the same resolution. And now you'll have a smaller size photo to work with, right? See, it didn't really like downsize too well. So sometimes it's working, it's worth it working with the original big picture. But when you put it in the portfolio, you could always downsize some of the images that might be too large. I'm always going to get emails that say like my prof professor, my portfolio is so big. And it's like, well, your files are too large or something like that. So be cautious of what you're doing and how big your files are. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, you're going to get to the point where in InDesign, you're not going to be able to see the drawings or the lines that you've made. If you go to window or you go to view, display performance, there's three types. There's fast quality. You'll actually see the image that's there that you're working with, right? But your computer will slow down. So you want to turn that on sporadically, but you don't want to work in that mode. Typical is better. So let me, hold on, let me just make this a little bit easier to look at. Well, huh? oh, right, hold on. Is that this? Is that what that was? 
Yeah. So here's an old PNG of one of the early assignments. And I can't really see what size that is. So I could zoom in. It's still not really showing me. So I could go to view. And just to show you what it looks like, it's a So it's not showing me because it's not rendering all that information because in like InDesign knows that I don't need it to lay it out in a piece of paper. You know, you're just scrolling and you have a bunch of pages open. It's not going to load everything all at once. So if I want to look at this more specifically, you go to view, uh, uh, display performance, high quality. You could turn that on to get the size right. Say I want it to be this size and I can quickly turn on auto fit. So now if I go to view, display performance, I go to typical. Now, if I want it bigger, it'll automatically fit that to my new crop size. So I could hold down shift if I want. And I don't see the image, but I know that it's already kind of fitting in that box. So now when I go to shift W and see what that looks like, there's what it looks like, but I don't need to load this image for me to work on it. Command W probably. Um, are there any other questions? So we got layers, we got pages, um, we have text. You can make shapes and do other things, but it's really just, just, just drag and drop your assignments, crop them if you need to, um say like you want to put the rendering in but you want the rendering to fit in a certain way so here is the png of the rendering that we did last class so this came in at a very large file right so i could click auto fit so whatever shape i put it in it's going to fit however it wants to i can uncheck that i could I could change the size of this box to be there. And without holding shift, I just want it to be that height. So I could do auto fit proportionally and it fit like that. So I'm just shy of that image. So if I want to zoom in, auto fit the width, you know, it looks like if I click the middle, it cut off a little bit of the height, but that's okay. So maybe I'll make it a little bit wider and then I'll auto fit the width again. And there's the rendering for that day or for that assignment. So I could put in the other one from that day. So instead, if I want to have it the exact same size. I could copy and paste that box. It's the image is still in there, but I'm gonna drag and drop the color version instead. And because those are basically the same proportions, it's the same size. And then if I want to, That's the one with the lines. That's the one with the lines. You can't drop. Was I right? Yeah. You're not going to be able to drop your Illustrator files into here. You're going to have to make PDFs or JPEGs or PNGs of them. Um, you know about the default, like, more like, around, 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 So if I, did you start with the box or did you start with the picture? Morty, describe your question again. Like, okay, so then you're at the uh, 
You should just be able to drag. For me, it's like requested. Oh, you might have the you might have the selection tool instead of the regular selection. Tool. So you might have the white mouse versus the black mouse. I could take a look in a second if you want me to. So the crop is the outline. So I can place the image, and this is the size that it is, right? So if I need to crop the image to be in a certain area, that box, that outline is the crop line. The image is still in there. So if I click the circle, the image is still floating in there. That's why sometimes you'll get a situation like this where this is the boundary line of the object of the crop line. And then this is the object inside. And that is just shy of each other. So if I kind of highlighted that a little bit more, right? What's happening? So sometimes you might get a situation where you think you cropped it, but you didn't actually crop it within that box. So it might accidentally be floating within the box that you're trying to put it in. So that's why it's always good to make sure that you're not, you're inside the box. <laughs> Is there any other questions before I end this tutorial? I think I got everything. Oh, is that where you were? I